You need to learn to play and to be relaxed when you have this kind of stuff. Um, you want to pause that? Or <laughs> well, if it falls every 20 minutes, we're good. It's a good reminder. To yeah. Okay. Shit. So one died in the... Doesn't matter, you have four more. Yeah, come on. All right. Hey, I'm Ali from Cataclysm, the metal band from Canada, and welcome to Drum Talk. comes from like everybody could be in a way a drummer. Everybody uh, is attracted to the pulse, the tribal uh, dance, you know, this, this kind of stuff. This started like thousands of years ago. And as you said, you know, it evolved in different ways. And the drum set is kind of like uh, a gathering of all these uh, elements into one instrument. So it gives you the power to create pretty much like pretty complex stuff, you know, especially when you go into Latin music that brought like all these different percussions into like one drum set for Latin uh, or Afro-Cuban drumming. There's always the groove, which is uh, the pulse that the thing that everybody's looking for as a drummer, you know, the groove. So uh, you can feel it. It's hard to explain. And also there's all these complex stuff like polyrhythms that you can play around cycles and mathematics kind of. 4 over 3, 5 over 4, all this complex stuff. But it comes down to trying to make a uh, an artistic mix of all this stuff into music. So that's that's the challenge, you know, because drummers are often put aside like like stupid <laughs> musicians, you know. That, uh, but yeah, the challenge is to really make music out of all this stuff, you know. So uh, combining the groove, um, the knowledge you have of drumming, uh, of rhythm, uh, all these different styles. The point is always to make, to make the, the best music, you know, it's, uh, it's not about showing off skills as much as making good songs, for me at least. metal drummers, most of the time you expect them to play blast beats and stuff, you know, uh, uh, grind, gravity blast, you know, all this crazy stuff. But uh, I've been more, uh, myself, uh, more of a like rock and funk drummer. By the force of things, I kind of merge into metal more with time, but I've always been more into stuff like alternative rock, like Perfect Circle, Tool, uh, funky stuff, you know, this kind of uh, 70s type of stuff and, and later on, you know, modern funk, uh, this Dennis Chambers type of stuff. So for me, it's more about the groove than, you know, the technicality or the you know, virtuoso type of stuff. Uh, some other drummers are, are able to combine like this top level drumming and musicality, like uh, Vinnie Kalauta, who played with Sting and Frank Zappa and many great drummers. So this is kind of, this is more my type of drummer who could actually put the virtuoso type of stuff in an artistic way. So when I practice by myself, first thing I'm gonna do is probably like a funk groove, stuff like this. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. <laughs> I'm not old, I'm just 31, but, but yeah, I'm, with years I'm getting you know, more into the slow stuff and uh, I'm trying to incorporate this as well with the band. So some, uh, some new stuff on the last record we've tried, it's more like, you know, going atmospheric, uh, groovy stuff. Um, so yeah, this, I'm more into this kind of stuff, you know. But uh, I still love metal, you know, the energy, especially when you play live, people getting crazy jumping off of the stage. This doesn't happen in a jazz concert, you know. <laughs> I've done some stuff like this before and there's just like, it's just completely another thing, you know. You're still a drummer, but it's completely a different dynamic. Me, I'm used to hit as hard as I can every single strike, every hit. And then when you play jazz, you feel more like you're walking on eggs, you know. It's more about being one element in the band. You're not like a... I wouldn't say you're as important in this kind of music. Sure, you're, you're keeping the time and everything, but it's not... 
it's not as busy, you know, uh, and you cannot put as much energy and power, I would say, in this type of music. That's why I, I went towards that. No, I would I would be more in the laid back type of stuff. The problem is the level is so high to play what I have to do uh, on stage and in the studio that you have to manage your time basically si sitting on your drum set because I'm also you know doing the writing stuff with the band and producing stuff in my own studio. So the time you sit on your drum set, especially when you're doing heavy stuff, it's it's not too long. You cannot do eight hours of really heavy heading. You're gonna get destroyed. Uh, you said yourself you had problems with your uh, your body like. Most drummers, I think, would go through this at one point in their life. They would go to an obstacle. It's going to be either like a physical strain or exha exhaustion, you know. Like me, myself, I had to, um, to work around this. I, had the, I was close to get carpal tunnel syndrome. I had numbness a little bit. So I went to see different therapists and uh, I ended up, you know, having to, to take a little bit of muscle mass to, to make the, the tendons, you know, be able to bear all this impact, all this vibration, because when you're drumming heavy stuff like this, you know, it takes a stall, you know. Even legends like Charlie Benante, he had, he had like carpal tunnel syndrome or something recently, he had to pull off from one tour. So, you know, most guys, famous or not, you know, they go through this. So you have to find your way through that. And therapy helps, you know, training, you know, fitness. So for me, it all goes together, like drumming and health and fitness, because fitness without good nutrition, doesn't compute so you know cardio muscle uh, uh, nutrition all this stuff has to be together and most uh, young guys out there that are doing metal now they're getting it you know it's not like the old rock and roll days where you can just drink all day and party all night doesn't doesn't work like this anymore you know if you want to be able to do this for many years you need to take care of yourself so that's a good advice i would say to all aspiring drummer uh, right now It's like everybody in life, everything right now in life, everybody, everything is accelerating. The time is compressing. It feels like everything is changing much quicker. Same thing, like music is a reflection of this. It, it evolved really quickly in the last 10, 20 years. The drumming is, is the same thing. It's, it's almost become a standard to play 260, 270 blast beats, you know. <laughs> but I mean, indeed, the body hasn't changed. You know, we're still the same humans as we were like 100 years ago. So I would say technology in a way helps, uh, helps out um, to make to make it sound good in the first place. So why I use the Roland hybrid drumming system triggers on kicks and uh, also the Cataclysm on snare we use a trigger also because they have this this type of uh, northern hyperblasting. So you know it's kind of like doing a 16th note roll, regular alternative stroke roll, but with uh, only one one hand you can just do gravity roll, which is actually just a type of technique that was used in the 50s and 60s. And so yeah, the technology helped you know, bring this new elements. But you could say it's cheating in a way because it's using the, the triggers as a way to enhance your sound. I would say it's not really as much cheating as uh, taking opportunity in technology to you know, make your drum set sound better. Actually, when I jump on stage, I try to destroy everything and I'm having you know, some inflammation sometimes. It goes with it. You know, when you go on stage, you go all out. It's, we have one hour of work per day, not you know, eight or 10. So when you have this one hour show, you need to exactly, you compress all your energy into this thing and it has to be serious you know, output. You know, I see Ken from aboard it, super relaxed, you know, brrr, super fast blast beat, 270, stuff like that. Me, uh, I would say, this guy is more like a, I told him, he was more like a Lamborghini, you know, super high speed, refined. Me, I'm more like an old muscle car, you know. Uh, I like to hit hard. And also, I think it, it translates really well uh, live because when you have higher output on your snare, uh, on your thumbs, everything, it cuts through much more. And it's not only the, the head resonating, it's the whole shell 
shell of the drums. So same thing on cymbals. There's an amount of if you hit too ha too uh, too too heavy, it's gonna choke the drums. But there's a sweet spot you can hit really hard. And uh, you know it started in the 70s with John Bonham and stuff like that. They they learned they, they figured out that when you hit really hard, you get a lot of sound out of the instrument, right? This, this thing about uh, the new breed drummer, technical type of drummer, less savages, you would say, like more uh, focused control. It's just a, a way to adapt to this new uh, requirement in the style of music because it's just too fast to come out, you know, jumping everywhere and you need to be able to control yourself and uh, make every bit of energy count, basically. What you can say about it is the more it goes to 11, like insanely crazy, super fast, the more brutal it gets, the less brutal uh, it appears to me on stage. Ab uh, absolutely. And, and that's why I like to keep strange. it in the sweet spot. For me, sweet spot, you know, we have yeah. songs that are quite fast, but I don't like it. Honestly, you know, I prefer low, heavy, groovy stuff. And at, I think that's why also the band in the package, when you see us, you can tell, you know, when, it's not about speed sometimes. You get a heavy song, like one of the most uh, well-known song from Cataclysm is Cripple and Broken, which is quite slow, actually, 120 tempo. But when the song starts, people get crazy and they jump everywhere. So it's, sometimes it's not about speed, and sometimes actually you bring the tempo down and the groove goes up. What I mean by there is uh, by that is uh, is just it gets more ballsy and more groovy and more listenable. And also when it goes too fast to make an album with songs at 260, 270, there's so much content, so much information, it's almost impossible to make it sound good. So you drop the tempo and you're gonna probably fix a lot of stuff. As far as metal drumming goes, because that's what I'm doing right now mostly, um, I would say it's to be aware of you know uh, the limits of your body and um, also all things related to you know your your posture on the drum set, you know your muscle mass, uh, the way you hit, and the techniques you use, and all these things you know the. They make a hole, and if you're um, you're not careful about this, you're gonna have to pay the price at, at some point. So I see drummers, you know, with with awkward postures, you know, like uh, you know, like body rich like this. Said in in 10, 20 years from now, your neck is gonna be busted out. You know, you're gonna be stuck like a hunchback. You know, so you have to be really careful about this stuff. And uh, so posture first, you know, on the drum set, just the way you sit. Like right now, I'm way too low. Uh, I would never sit like this on a kit. Body, your muscle mass. Uh, I used to be uh, like 20, 25 pounds lighter. Uh, I used to run every day, an hour a day, just to keep cardio, you know, top level. But the problem is you're burning everything. Some guys, they can take muscle mass easily. Some others, uh, they have to really work for it. Like me, I really have to train a lot so I can take one pound of, you know, lean muscle mass. But it's like it is. I was born like that, what can I do? So um, yeah, on tour, us, on tour, the point is just to maintain this stuff and when you come back it's basically when you go to war you know you have like one two months you know like sleeping in the bus eating crappy food most of the time here it's been good on that tour we've been lucky you know it goes with the type of tour you do the the places you're playing uh, but then you know like the food and then the sleep it's also really really important a lot of people they underestimate this and this stuff creates a lot of problem in the mind and in the body you know like um, high levels of stress, it's going to make it almost impossible to, to generate muscle mass with the training. So you need to keep your your sleep at 8 or 10 hours. Depends. Some people, they need less. But me, I try to go at 9, 10 if I can. On tour more because the, the quality of the sleep is really, really bad, you know, when the bus is shaking and stuff like this. Sometimes, you know, when you're flying from gig from one gig to another, like last summer we did 17 uh, openers. So it's it's plain. Uh, shuttle, then festival, then hotel, and stuff like this. Sometimes you don't even have a hotel, you just go play, 
plane, play and then hotel. So this is no sleep. This happened a few times. So you still need to play the show. You know, nobody cares if you haven't slept. You know, there's 20,000 or I don't know how many people in front. You still need to play your show. So, you know, this takes a stall. So that's why I'm telling you, uh, if you can at least maintain what you got on tour, and then when you come back home, then you regain uh, you know, what you can regain. Uh, that's why when I come back, sometimes first thing I do, I drop my luggage and I start running like a dog on Sunday. <laughs> you know, you open the door, pretty much the same. And then, you know, uh, buy a truck of food, fill the fridge, and then, you know, eat a feast, you know, <laughs> just like try to make it up for the, the days that were pretty bad on tour. You know, because after you come back from tour, it's gonna be at least a week, you're still fucked up from sleep, you know, the time zone, uh, you know, just the sleep, you know, the the way you sleep in a bus is always shaking. Your body tries to adapt to that, and then you come back to a, a bed that's stable. You're like, what's going on there? <laughs> you know, just this is weird, you know. It's like this for everybody on tour, you know, but for a drummer, because it's more physical, it's it's more taxing a bit, so you know, people are saying, ah, you're always sleeping, you're always like, yeah, you know, because it's high output, you know, maybe you don't understand, but, you know, it's almost, I've, I've talked to many therapists and they told me what you're doing basically is like an athlete, so you're going to have to take care of your stuff. Um, so that's why I was I was getting these training programs, I was getting these uh, nutrition advice and all this stuff, you know. Yeah, that's how I take it, some drummers, they don't, and it works for them. It's fine for them, but uh, I would recommend like for aspiring drummer, metal drummers, crazy stuff like this to take care of this, this part. It's a really good way to work actually, if you just go and you spend hours in your rehearsal room, it's not necessarily going to be productive time. I used to have, uh, you know, aspects like vocabulary, like practice, like the, you know, the fill-ins and all this stuff. Then, uh, you know, independence. So I had these, you know, Gary Chester system type of uh, independence exercise. So you have like a, a melody line to read, basically with one of the limbs and all the three other limbs, they're going to keep the same pattern. And then with your mind or your voice, you're trying to keep the count. The new breed? The new breed, exactly. So this was independence, then vocabulary like fills, you know, like a, a really cool lick you've, you've listened to, but you need to break it down. You need to learn the muscle memory, you know, like these sticking patterns with kick inside and stuff like that. Different kind of like departments. And if you actually practice that, and the fun stuff, of course, because this is why you started playing drums, basically, like play alongs and stuff like this. So this is like all different stuff that if you actually uh, work like this in a systematic way, you're going to make your drumming uh, time much more productive. In a way. And the less drumming time you have, the more you have to do this kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting a little bit of your, your time. You know, even if it's fun to just go in your rehearsal room. Problem is when you have a band and um, a touring band, like that's your main thing, or uh, you're going to have to be most of the time doing stuff related to this if you like it or not so for example us the way we write music cataclysm is a uh, I program all the drums uh, for pre-production and sometimes I can't even play the tracks uh, and then it, it goes with the you know the, the fish stick and the carrot type of technique so then you always have to aim to what you want to play but you can't necessarily play this part so that's one of the ways I get to evolve as a drummer uh, but then again it's only uh, in the technical and uh, sp most of the time it's speed or independence uh, challenges. So if you have the luxury of not having anything um, specific to do as far as gigs coming or studio recordings or stuff like that, then you're fine, you have much more time you know, in, on your hands and much more freedom to practice whatever you like. Yeah.
I wish I could have more free time you know, to practice my own stuff and to become a better drummer because when you're on tour you, you're not becoming a better drummer. You just try to stabilize and not go down too much you know because you're playing your show and you want to keep your energy for your show so you're not gonna spend the whole day practicing stuff. You need to make it up when you come back home. Yeah so I'm more into uh, play stuff that's not triggered so I, you know, I shut down my, my trigger modules. Uh, I just you know, play acoustic, making, making it sound good with ghost notes because it's really, really cool to use trigger on the snare or with the band for it to sound really good. But the problem is, is the way I set it up is all or nothing. The trigger is picking up or is not picking up. So because that's the point of using a trigger with a microphone to enhance. So wh what happens with ghost notes is you cannot use ghost notes. So all this part of the finesse of drumming, uh, fluidity, all this stuff is a little bit uh, put aside, you know? So when I come back, and actually we discuss that, and then the next record, we are gonna, we're gonna put more of that. And what I'm gonna start doing is having two snare drums and one triggered, one not triggered. So when I have to do these parts, you know, I don't have to turn on enough or stuff like this, you know. So it's really cool, actually. It just takes more room on an actual already big drum set, which is that's how it is. It's the name of the game, you know. You need many uh, voices, you know, to create melodies with symbols and stuff like this, you know. Even when we're tracking. Um, in the songs, you know, it's not only about the melodies in, in the guitar or bass, it's about, you know, making musical parts. So sometimes we just do takes and we try to make the most musical crash hits, you know, not just mechanically because your left hand is close to this symbol, you're gonna hit that, but you're actually making patterns, you know. And if you listen to the last album, you can hear on parts that crashes and stuff like this uh, are following the melodies most of the time, you know, like with the guitars and stuff. So it it makes it blend in even more with, with what's actually written with like um, melodic stuff. And also I really enjoy uh, uh, using the symmetry of the drum kit. So two rides, uh, four crashes, two splashes, two china, two hats. So that way you can create really interesting stuff. So when there are gigs drummer listening or people just aware of, you know, they have good headphones, they can, they can actually, oh, the guy switch right, now he's playing on the right, you know, and now he's on the left. And different sounds also. I use a, more of a heavy ride on the left. I use, you know, the Pice T, a 22 inch power ride, super pingy, cutting through everything. And on the right, more like a crashy type of ride. So you can actually, have good crash sound with it. So it's just different ways to make uh, your drum parts sound interesting. To uh, thank you guys, Drum Talk, for inviting me, and uh, hope to see you guys on the road. Uh, Ali from Cataclysm saying goodbye. You're not